G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Um, I want to look at registers today. So what's a register? Well a register is a small piece of information, a small piece of memory rather, and it's uh, actually on the CPU itself. So they're very, very fast. Um, in assembly what you end up doing is um, reading data from memory into the registers. You manipulate the data and then you write the answer back out to memory. So um, what are the registers? Well our current CPUs uh, have a long history. They originally came from something called the 8086, was from Intel in something like the 1970s. And uh, if we start with um, the 8086's register set, we'll be able to see quite clearly how we get the uh, current one. So the 8086 register set, first of all, it's got um, AX, BX, CX, DX then SI DI BP and SP this is the source index oh, we should start up here actually this is sometimes called it the accumulator None of these names uh, really mean anything anymore except for, you know, a couple of instructions. You can pretty much use these registers for whatever you want. Uh, this used to be called the base register. This one was the counter. And this one was data. Um, this is destination. Index. This was base pointer, and this is the stack pointer. Um, these two here, you can use um, as just general purpose registers, just like AX, BX, CX, and DX, the source index and destination index. Only um, they also have a special role in that they're used for uh, manipulating strings. Um, okay, so on top of those we have some segment pointers. There's CS, DS, SS, and ES. This is the code segment register. This is the data segment register. This is the stack segment. This is extra. You can use that for whatever you want. So um, the CS, for example, a lot of these have been moved now. They're, they're no longer in uh, X64. But um, CS points to the place in memory where you're uh, currently executing code is. Uh, DS points to the place in memory where your the data for your program starts. Uh, SS points to the place in memory where your stack segment starts. Now the stack is used to um, pass parameters when you call functions. And uh, ES you can use to point to wherever you want. Okay, every one of these registers is 16 bits. Okay, 16 bits long. So two bytes, it's a word one word or two bytes. Alrighty, now we're going to talk on the next page about AX, BX, CX and DX because they're quite interesting if you've if you've only ever programmed in um, sort of uh, object oriented languages this is probably going to come across as quite strange but um, well we'll begin with AX they're all the same but we'll start with AX. So AX equals a single word like we said before just like that but a word as we know is two bytes so in order to allow programmers also not only to manipulate um, words but to allow them to manipulate um, bytes as well um, the 8086 splits AX if you like into AL, ALO in other words and AH that's one byte and that's another byte. So
So um, BX has exactly the same thing. It's got BL, below the, the low byte. It's also got BH. It's got CX has the same. Um, CL, CH, and DX has the same. DL and DH. Um, so if you like, you've got um, eight byte variables, or you can be using these registers as four um, words, or you can mix and match. So AX, you might be using um, AH and AL as bytes, and uh, BX, maybe you're using that as a 16-bit word. It's, um, it's entirely up to you, and it's very, very flexible. So something very important to go through is that um, if you change the value of AL, you will change the value of AX as well, you see? Um, AL, AH, and AX aren't independent. They're the same thing. So for instance, if you say something like MOV... What the... What am I doing? MOV... <laughs> MOV into AX, the value of 4. Um, this is exactly the same thing as, if we look at AX, this is what it's going to look like. 4, right there. So AL will also equal 4. But AH will equal nothing, because the top 8 bits um, of 4 in a 16-bit word is all 0. So AH will equal 0. Um, if we go mov into AX, I'll scrap that, scrap that, scrap that, scrap that. If we say mov into AH1, what's going to happen? Well, just like this, we've got here, so this had 4 in it from before, and AH has now got 1. So what's going to happen if we print out the value of AX? You see, what's AX got? If AL's got 4 and AH as um, 1, then uh, AX has whatever binary number happens to be. Um, let's have a look. 1... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so four is a one there. And then also the eighth bit, because that's in the eighth bit. So that's that four in AL. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there, that's all AL. And from here all the way to here is a H. And we also put a one right there. So what's it going to mean? Well, that's 256 plus 4 gives us um, 260. Okay, so doing this, moving um, 1 into AH like that, when 4's in AL, that's going to make AX equal to 260. All right. So uh, it's just important to be careful that they're, they're not independent. Um, yeah, AH and AL are independent. I mean, if you move any number into AL, it couldn't possibly affect the number in AH, and uh, vice versa. But um, these bytes are not independent of the uh, word-sized parent. Okay, thank you.